Could you give the folks, anyone who's not familiar with Robert Zubrin, because we do we do have a few space noobs in here, um, could you give a quick two cents on on who he is? Yeah, Robert Zubrin is a kind of old, uh, you mentioned the old guard earlier, and I don't think, uh, I don't know to what extent, I used to know, like in 2017, to what extent he was actually involved with like the early days of NASA or the mid days, but I know that in the 80s and 90s too, I think, he went before Congress or the Senate and both, and basically pitched this idea he had being um, a very well-educated, I think, double PhD in, I think at least one of them was aerospace engineer, uh, and right. another one was, was something else. It might have been theoretical, like physics as well. Mm. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I guess I'm lying, so it doesn't matter. But he <laughs> argued the case for Mars Direct and then Mars Indirect when that didn't work, and he talked to, there's a, there's a scene where he's talking and making his case very ardently, almost like with a with a with a mad fury, like mm -hmm. screaming into the microphone as if he's like disciplining a child, but he's talking to, to like freaking Congress. That we have the technology, we have we can go to Mars and uh, by sending a rocket there that will uh, basically do like I think it's electrolysis and convert uh, the the air and the material on Mars so that there's water and fuel and oxygen waiting there and then another ship that could be identical would go to mars and the next time mars is in its closest path to earth and the uh, return vehicle would already be ready to go before humans ever got there and mars indirect was uh, when that wasn't approved it was another attempt that he made that it was just like a small modification of that that would i think just basically multiply the number of starships that would be there so not starships in the elon musk sense but figuratively some kind of starship that would land on mars and so that when the astronauts started going there they could go straight into potentially being colonists, as opposed to having to come back right away. But essentially, Robert Zubin was the person who pioneered the idea of stripping down all of the highfalutin technology and expensive space shuttle proposals of NASA in the 80s and turning it into something that could just use what we have the way we did in the 60s to get to the moon to get to Mars. Cheap, quick, efficient, and safely and back so that we could say we at least did it and then build on that and start actually becoming multi-planet species. And Elon Musk, uh, 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 was one of his protégés in terms of thinking and a lot of his ideas for um, the architecture of the missions for Starship and its purpose uh, are sort of like a grandchildren or godfathered by Robert Zubrin. Mm. Yeah, and if, if anyone's interested uh, in learning more, the the case for Mars is ah. that is the one to read um, for sure. And I know there's been a few moments where I know they uh, the Mars Society puts on uh, a conference every year and i know that those conversations with elon uh have even produced a change in elon's mind as far as like how they approach going to mars i think the south pole became uh or the south pole the moon i, I don't remember what it was but i know there's been many times where just having a discussion with him uh, we've, i think we've seen it with tim dodds everyday astronaut uh recordings where just he's open to changing his mind when a new idea comes up uh, and this, there's been a recent video that's come out with someone interviewing him, and he was sharing a story of the early days when they were trying to figure out Starship and innovate fast enough. And he was just saying, he was leaving the meeting saying, and you know, don't quote me, but uh, you know, we're never going to get there in my lifetime if we don't figure this out. Right. And there's this drive for for making it happen in our lifetime, and when I look back, and and even today. Uh, we saw it with the Boeing Starliner incident. Uh, that's just a peek into uh, the different mindset that exists in the space industry. There, that there isn't that extreme drive to finish a project, and uh, it seems like a lot of the way that these projects were being funded before SpaceX um, were these big bloated contracts that allowed for timelines to be extended and more money to be added and not necessarily guaranteeing a conclusion and it it seems like the folks who were the, the benefit the beneficiaries of those budgets are the most upset with yeah spacex and Elon. that's a really good super position i think that you might be subtly working in there between his personality and the way that he's always willing to if you talk to him straight and he can tell that you're thinking about what you're saying um he's open to like good ideas and changing his way of thinking that's extremely rare with anyone that has serious power in today's day and age. And that's been the case before in a long time history. But the a lack of that, the opposite of that, 
it's ex precisely what we've had um, in other institutions, not necessarily saying that NASA is just like this, but working with like, you know, the um, congressional budget on like a four year program or an executive uh, branch um, program to get to Mars sometime this decade doesn't doesn't really work. And people have tried it over and over again. Different presidents have tried it. Bush had an idea. Obama had an idea. Reagan had an idea. Yeah. And it just doesn't get done because then you're stuck there. And the people that try to, um, on the other side of it, people that uh, at these institutions, uh, federal institutions, that are supposed to put these ideas together and build a new architecture to get to space, a new um, mission plan, uh, they end up, uh, of course, benefiting from the pay and from the programs that are there. And I'm not saying this is true of any specific institution, but what happens with bureaucracies that have a not like a hard line or someone driving or holding a fire under their rear end to get to the end goal mm. is that you have these little fiefdoms pop up and mm. it can be like just like this endless bureaucratic geometry where the end goal is is no longer the point and you're just living in like this purely ironic you know probably postmodern in a funny way if you're not stuck in it and you don't really care about the goal um but that's something that elon musk knows how to deconstruct and break down and I think that's why, and I, I can't say whether this will work or not, but his whole, like, what is it, Department of Getting Everything Done or something is, like, Doge idea, yeah. where he yeah, just wants to break down bureaucracies. Too, yeah. Government efficiency, that was yeah. it. That's better than getting stuff done or getting everything done. But it works. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it definitely works as an acronym. And, in, and for space missions, it definitely works a lot better. And that really plays into, uh, it reflects his personality, I think, of just, like, stripping down all of the noise, cutting down the fiefdoms, just get to the end goal.